to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Raya Salter. And I'm Elise Anderson. In our show this time, we'll cover the 2017 Hawaii State Science and Engineering Fair at the Hawaii Convention Center. We'll walk the floor, we'll check out the exhibits, and we'll talk with the amazing kids and visitors who are there. With all the exuberant kids, and all the parents, teachers, judges, and visitors who came to celebrate the kids, the fair, and science, some say it was the best science fair ever. Here are some of the kids we talked to. You'll really enjoy them. They're charming and dedicated to science. They're Hawaii's future. I'm Camille Diaz and I go to Kaimiki Middle School. I'm in the seventh grade. Um, and then I did my project about athlete's foot. I wanted to find an effective home remedy for it because home remedies are safer, cheaper, and more accessible than conventional medicines. Um, athlete's foot is caused by cancer yeast, so to test the five different remedies I tested, I tested them on yeast. So the five home remedies that I tested were baking soda, apple cider vinegar, Epsom salt, hydrogen peroxide, and tea tree essential oil. Um, the most effective was the apple cider vinegar and the baking soda, and the least effective was the Epsom salt. Hi, I'm Patricia Saiki, and I am from Hilo Intermediate. So my project is basically about um, just seeing how dirty our school is by testing the doorknobs. Well, usually I see kids picking their nose or scratching something <laughs> and then grabbing the door and then I have to grab it behind them and I'm like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so I just decided maybe I could show them how dirty, what they're doing to it and how many people touch that and what's going on. So I just picked four doors and then I did the door handles because that's what's used most. And I found out that the um, bathroom stalls and the D101 room, which is a classroom, had the most bacteria and then the cafeteria and teacher's lounge had the least, which was really surprising because <laughs> I expected the cafeteria door to be dirtiest, but it wasn't. And I think the teacher's lounge is actually being cleaned more than the kids. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what's going on because they're the cleanest. Um, my name is Jessica Logan. And I'm Laura Siako and we're from Trinity Christian School, Kailo. So our purpose is to determine whether or not the kinetic energy of a moving object changes as the function of its mass. Okay, so our hypothesis for our project was <clears throat> that if we add 7.5 grams of lead weights to this car, that it will travel 0.5% further um, every time we roll it down the track. And we predicted this because of our formula, Ke equals one half mv squared. Um, as you can see all around the board. And Ke stands for kinetic energy, M stands for mass, and V stands for velocity, and you score velocity. And our second part of our project was to measure the velocity of the car as it hits the bottom of the ramp. And we measured this by um, this motion detector and this fancy calculator right there. And um, our prediction for that was 2.01 meters per second using our same formula. We predicted that it was going to go 0.5% further on this, um, on the distance, and it went 0.62. So we were like, um, we were very close in our um, prediction and our results. My name is Christian, and I'm from Wallow Middle School. And this is MediAlert, which is a solution to many, a problem many older people have, which is taking the medicine correctly and on time. Overdoses and underdoses is very dangerous and can cause many health effects later on. Right. So my solution is a modification to the regular pill case, which gives a visual and auditory alert. So it has, they put LEDs, so they let up twice a day, and they show when you need to take your medicine. And also a buzzer that will give you like a sound. I'm Claire Hughes, and I'm from YKO Intermediate. My project is about rapid ohia death, which is a really big problem on the Big Island. And so it kills trees by getting into it and blocking the water from getting to its limbs. And it's a fungus. And so I just was liking to work with that because it's going to help my community, and I was really interested in it. So it just 
gets into the limbs and it gets all the it just saturates all the water for itself. Pea bark there looking at trees and forests and trying to find a cure, but there is no cure yet. I'm Julia Matsuzaki and I'm from Hawaii Baptist Academy. How can I create liquid form water from the surrounding air around us? Uh, I was trying to think of a way of making water in a different point of view. And so I, th I was thinking of making it from the surrounding air around us because that in the air there's humidity and that when I take that and I put it into a device like this, the air starts to the air and then humidity starts to condensate kind of over here. It collects water molecules and then if it drops into this cup and then it starts to form water. Um, so I use like this electrical outlet, but I was thinking uh, for my next step, I would use a solar panel, so then it would be able to use around the world and other places except just at. Uh, I'm Ian from Island Pacific Academy, and I chose this project because a lot of things in the news recently have been showing that terraforming can be done sooner and sooner, and so I wanted to do a project showing ways that we can terraform. So I simulated the environment on Mars, and I showed that the Mars environment, it can be an even better place to grow plants than on Earth. Well, in the soil, there are some nutrients um, that can help plants grow better than on Earth. And in the atmosphere, the more carbon dioxide can help plants go through photosynthesis a lot better. Oh, I'm Julianne Vernis and I'm from Waipahu Intermediate. This, this project is about the effect of temperature on the power of solar cells and, and I tested it by putting three different plates at different temperatures. One at ambient temperature, one at hot temperature and one in a chill temperature. And I placed solar cells on them so that the temperature of the plates would change the temperature of the cells. Then I would then I would put the cells under the sun and then using a multimeter I would measure the voltage in the current. And then using the formula voltage times current equals power, I would find a power output. For the voltage it seemed that colder temperatures had higher voltages, but then in current, I didn't see as much of a trend there, though I hope to see one later if I would make any improvements. But it seems that for the power, it seems that due to the voltage being higher with colder temperatures, it seems that most of the time, colder temperatures yielded higher power. Hi, my name is Alyssa, and I'm from my Pahu Intermediate School. <laughs> Hi, my name is Trent, and I'm also from my Pahu Intermediate School. So last year my partner and I attended a presentation by NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and they talked about the growing issue of um, oceanic garbage patches. This project was created to decrease the amounts of litter found in the world's oceans. With keeping this topic in mind, our solution to this problem involved a machine that was programmed to pick up litter on the ocean shorelines. So it has an ultrasonic sensor which works similar to a sonar and it has a scoop-like attachment that would be able to hold on to the detected object. I'm Alana from Kaimiki Middle School. I'm Monica. I'm Ariel. <laughs> so we chose this topic because coral, um, since we live on an island that's surrounded by coral reefs, um, this is relevant to our, us and since tourism is such a large part of the economy and part of the reason why coral reefs are dying. We found out that zinc oxide or like chemicals that are more natural based are better. Um, that we should stop using chemical based sunscreens because that's affecting our coral reefs and how they settle. Hi, my name is Katrina Kuo and this is my project. The purpose of my project is to create a device which I call the Medicine Dispenser Assistant, also known as MDA, that will be able to inform patients how much medication they consume and alert patients in case of medical overdoses and remind patients when to take their medication. I wanted to do this project because I watch news and learned that according to the National Institute of Drug Abuse, 38,000 people die per year, so I want to help save lives and prevent this. So I also like to program and with the codes and stuff, so I put these two project ideas together to create this device. So this device will um, be able to calculate the number of pills left in a medicine bottle and tell the patients when to take their next medication. So there's also a countdown timer on the screen to show when it's time to take their next medication. 
And there's two LED lights, which are to um, show, the green light is to show it is time to take their medication, and the red LED light is to show it's not time to take their medication. Well, um, I wanted to test like different light sources and see if it affects like powering a, a, a light power radio. So I had to um, build like a solar panel contraption to charge the batteries, and then I would then put it inside the radio, and then turn it on, and then time how long it lasts. Well, I found out that sunlight is still the best, and nothing really can beat it. <laughs> my name is Summer, and I'm from Stevenson Middle School. So my project centers on the discovery of a novel solution that is a physical mode of action and combines pediculocidal and ovocidal action by using the alcohol in my solution to dissolve the cutaneous wax that surrounds the exoskeleton of the louse as well as using the PVP, which is a copolymer available in many hair care products, to provide a film over the egg that prevents the nymph from hatching and restricts oxygen transfer. I'm Ren and I'm from Kamiki Middle. I'm, uh, well, I'm Enzo and I'm from Kamiki Middle too. In Hawaii, you know how the rail is being built? Yeah, so we realized that the technology that they're using to build the rail is not necessarily the best and that there could be alternate possibilities that are better. So we researched a couple of possibilities and what we found was an idea and it was called the Hyperloop and it was created by Elon Musk, the creator, the founder of Tesla, the car company. So basically what it is is a maglev train, which is a train that uses magnetic, magnetic levitation to reduce the friction between the tra train and the ground. And then it puts that kind of train inside a vacuum seal chamber where there's no air so there's no air resistance. So um, to propel the train actually on the bottom is all electromagnets. So in the front it actually attracts the train and in the back it actually repels the train to make it move forward. I'm Lacey and I'm from the Big Island. My project is about hard water. Um, it's, not, it's not ice. It's a term used by geologists and hydrologists and it's basically the minerals pass through the water cycle that collects in the water. To do my project, I, I did three things. First, I did water bottles, got the same size, same brand, and I used soap suds so to measure the height. If it's a shorter height, then it's harder water. So I used 50 milliliters of water and 0.5 milliliters of soap, Dawn dish soap, and I shook it 20 times. As you can see here, the tank water, it's a shorter height in height. So I measured that and it only came out to be 13 millimeters, which is way shorter than the rest of the four. Next, I used champagne flutes, because they're glass, and I used water spots, which is um, the minerals and dirt deposits stayed behind when it dries and evaporates. So I dipped it each one in the different water resources and waited 10 to 20 minutes for it to dry. And as you can see here, the tank water again has more water spots than the rest. And it has, if you count it, because it's more visible, it's 63 water spots. So I'm Tracy Nguyen and I'm an 8th grader at Kaimuki Middle School. And my project's about using this coding program to um, and plugging in an exponential equation and a logistic equation to find out a trend line and calculate its R squared. If your R squared is close to one, in which that means that your trend line that you create is accurate, if um, microbiologists punch in a time number in a different code, the coding program will spit out a value, and that value, if your R squared is close to one, will show you um, a value that the bacteria should grow in. So in a way, you can kind of predict how bacteria can grow. Uh, my name is Grace and I'm from Maipahu Intermediate. So cognition is the processes of the human brain, so these can be things from reasoning to perception and learning. Uh, my project focuses on perception of information and I measured this using what is called a color Stroop test. So this Stroop test measures the Stroop effect, which is the interference time between two pieces of conflicting information. For example, if you look at the color cards down here, the word is shown in a color that is different from what it reads as. So um, my hypothesis for this experiment was that people in the quieter environments would perform 1.5 to 2 times better than the ones in the louder. And then to test this, I used a vacuum cleaner as a produced sound, and then I placed it at different distances from the test subject to alter the noise level. When I collected my data and did all the calculations, I found that there was a difference of 1.09 between the quietest and the loudest surroundings. 
Um, so my hypothesis wasn't completely supported by my data, but as you can see on the graph, there's still a general increase in time it took for them to complete the Shoop test when it got louder. My name is Jordan Henry, and I'm from Waipahu Intermediate. I like I drink like I like to drink Starbucks and tea a lot. So and I've been using a lot of like whitening toothpaste. So I decided. So I wanted to see which one was actually working when I was getting them. So what I did was I used 30 eggs and I had five brands of tooth whitening toothpaste, which was Crest, Colgate, Arm and Hammer, Sensodyne, and Aquafresh. I boiled the eggs and I then put the eggs into um, coffee because the eggshell has like similar qualities as our actual teeth since I couldn't use my own teeth. And then what I so I left that in for 24 hours and then I took it out for another 24 hours. And then I brushed each egg for two minutes and put it in like small up and down strokes because I saw I read that dentists say that that is the best way to brush our teeth. I then did that seven more six more times because I was representing a week of brushing. After I did that for each egg, and then I did that again four other times for my five trials, and I found that Crest 3D White is the best toothpaste to use for whitening toothpaste. Because of the sodium fluoride level, it has the highest out of all of them. So the more sodium fluoride in the toothpaste, the better the Crest, the better the whitening toothpaste will work. Thank you very much. Thank you. So our project is the optimization of algal biomass production under saltwater conditions. So um, currently the world depends a lot on, um, on fossil fuels, which is very unsustainable and it's not good for the environment. So um, algae is argued to be one of the best alternative sources to these fossil fuels because it has a low cost production, it's easy to cultivate, and it can grow virtually anywhere. So a lot of companies have looked into saltwater algae, but the problem with that is that many countries don't have a um, sustainable freshwater supply. So because of that, we decided to look into saltwater algae. So just to cut our hypothesis short, we hypothesize that um, um, if we um, test different concentrations of sodium phosphate and sodium nitrate, then the bottles with the 0.2 milligrams per milliliter sodium nitrate and the 0.4 milligrams per milliliter sodium phosphate will grow the most biomass. So we chose these two nutrients because a lot, there are many nutrients in the world that have different purposes um, in organisms, but sodium phosphate and sodium nitrate are one of the most, are two of the most common nutrients. Sodium nitrate, um, it's very important in chlorophyll, which you know helps this photosynthesis. And sodium phosphate kind of helps um, plants um, convert nutrients into these kind of building blocks in order for it to grow. So our procedure is that first we want to kind of optimize the environment. So we build a photobioreactor system with metal racks. So we had an oxygen tank and we had an air generator, and we had those like tubings that carry um, those airs as well as light, aquarium lights, to each of the algae bottles. So the reason why we decided to work with saltwater algae is because, you know, we're in Hawaii and we're basically surrounded by saltwater. So like if companies want to use our research to like build their or expand their um, algae production enterprises here, saltwater is really easily accessible. So over a two weeks period, we grow those algae in our photobioreactor system and we took it to our high school lab to analyze it for dry biomass content. So what we did is that we had a centrifuge, um, we used a drying oven to get the liquid out. I'm Annie Nakamoto and I'm from Waiakea High School. So I'm studying how the, the rapid ohia death disease affects the photosynthetic capabilities of the ohia tree. And I'm doing this because the ohia tree is a very important part of Hawaii's ecosystem. It makes up 62% of our overall forest area and native species rely on it for habitat. And it also protects our watershed. So I wanted to see how the disease would impact our Hawaii's ecosystem as a whole. Carbon capture, I wanted to focus on that because I wanted to relate my project to climate change. We also talked with some of the teachers behind the kids and some of the members of the Hawaii Academy of Science, which runs the fair, and some of the dedicated judges who take the time to judge and critique their projects. Why do we care about the Hawaii Science Fair? Not only for these kids who are amazing and win awards and get scholarships, but for all the kids and families who are inspired to learn, engage, and participate in science. 
They came from schools from around the island and the state. They came with their parents, teachers, mentors, and friends. It was a celebration for kids, for science, and for Hawaii. Some will have won trips to compete on the mainland. Some will be national winners. Some will get life-changing scholarships and be catapulted into fabulous careers. But every kid there is a winner. The fair enhances the way they think and present themselves, and that in turn builds lifelong confidence and quality of life. There are other winners too. They include the parents, teachers, mentors, and friends, and the judges, members, and officials of the fair itself, and for that matter, all the people who came to the fair to join the celebration. We want Hawaii to be steeped in science and technology. We want every kid and parent to speak the language of science. We want them to be at the frontiers of science and participate in the mind-boggling miracles being discovered. To do that, we need to start treating these kids and the development of our science and tech sector as a top priority and to make generous investments in them. We need to assemble a critical mass of our most promising resources, the techies, the makers, the startups, the entrepreneurs, and especially these science kids, and get them to do something big. What is that something? It's nothing less than to reshape our economy and save our state. To build a world-class workforce, one that will spawn great local careers and companies. To go beyond the limitations of our one-dimensional tourism economy and find a sustainable niche among the challenges of the 21st century. If we don't keep up with the world today, we and our kids will fall behind, possibly forever. Some say this is already happening, so it's not a time to be complacent. But keeping up takes commitment, not by a few, but by everyone you know. If we can build a generation of kids like these kids at the fair, yes, then maybe we can do it. So that's why the fair is so important. It's a statement of their future and ours. If your kid hasn't participated in the fair, make next year a priority. And if you didn't go this year, go next year to show your support. Let's make the fair part of the life plan of every kid. Let's fill the hall and their curious minds with science. A few years ago in fiscal hard times, the legislature stopped funding the fair. Since then, the fair has worked hard to find new funding, and things are presumably better for them now. If you get a chance to help the fair, personally or through your public officials, please do. It's for a good cause, maybe the best cause of all. Want to know more about the Hawaii State Science and Engineering Fair or the Hawaii Academy of Science? Check them out at hawaiiacademyofscience.org slash science hyphen fair. And now, let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. There's so much happening in Hawaii. Sometimes things happen under the radar and we don't hear much about them, but ThinkTech will take you there. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on OC16 several times every week to stay current on what's happening in government, industry, academia, and communities around the islands and the world. ThinkTech broadcasts its daily talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays, then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show, or if you want to replay or share our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. The audio is on thinktechhawaii.com slash radio, and we post all our shows as podcasts on iTunes. See our website for links. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links, or sign up on our email list and get the daily docket of our upcoming shows. ThinkTech has a high-tech, green screen, First Amendment studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to join our live audience or participate in our shows, write to think at thinktechhawaii.com. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at ThinkTechHI. 
We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives together in these islands. We want to stay in touch with you, and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together. You can call into our talk shows live. While you're watching any of our shows, you can call in to 415-871-2474 and pose a question or make a comment. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Hey Elise, that wraps up this week's edition of ThinkTech. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Elise does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more ThinkTech videos, and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on ThinkTech, visit ThinkTechHawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks for being part of our Think Tech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification and global awareness in Hawaii, and of course, science as a central theme in all of that. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Raya Salter. And I'm Elise Anderson. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.